So there have been some questions that, that have come up about um, uh, setting up a, a simple camera rig. Um, we have a couple of different options when it comes to creating a, a, a player camera. I have a default camera uh, inside my scene here. I've called it a player camera. And um, it's just the default camera. And we, we have some options when it comes to um, you know, following our player. A really simple solution that, that doesn't always work is we could just take this camera uh, and we could make a child of the balloon. Um, in this case, the balloon. Uh, and now we get the camera um, kind of moving with the rocket. Now that might not be the effect that you want um, because maybe you just want to kind of track uh, this object according to its X position or its horizontal position and not move up and down with the player. Um, and also, if we were to take this, and I'll just jump back into my previous example here for a moment, so I'll, I'll deactivate the balloon, and I'll reactivate the rocket, and if I take that same concept and take the player camera and throw it inside the rocket, um, we'll get some different results here. So when we, we thrust and we start to rotate, that gets a little disoriented. Now, that could be something uh, that we factor in during gameplay, but, uh, you know, I'm an old man, getting motion sick here, so I'm going to turn that off. That's definitely not going to work for the rocket um, or the balloon really because I, I want a different, a very specific mechanic. Now we could do something, I'm going to turn my balloon back on here and focus on this for a moment. Um, we could kind of search through the playmaker actions and we can search online and you know find some scripts and, and we can uh, build some things but we get a lot of control if we build our own camera rig. We'll do a, a really simple uh, just a real simple camera rig here. And what I'll do is um, just tell this camera to follow, to get the, the, the X position of the player and use that to set the position of the camera. Now we could, there is a smooth follow script. If I just type in follow, uh, you can see there's a smooth follow action here and down here in the preview, it tells that it'll track a, a, a target object, a game object, and we can set the distance and the height and the dampening and the rotation and all that jazz. And we could probably control this to where it, we basically get what we want, but we want a little bit more um, kind of specific control over this. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the player camera, and I'm going to add a state machine to it. And um, I'm just going to call this uh, state the, the, or the FSM, uh, the player follow. So I want to keep that FSM on the front end of it. Um, what am I doing here? That's a state. So this is just going to be the idle state. I'll go into the FSM tab and call this uh, player follow because that's what it's doing. That's what this whole state machine is going to do. And this will be a real simple setup. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to look for um, a get position and we can find that inside the transform uh, category here. And inside transform, we can get position. I'll double click to add that. And really the only position I'm concerned with, as long as I just want the camera uh, to move along X with the player position, um, really the only thing that, that I'm concerned about getting is the X position. Uh, so I don't want to get the, the, the position of the owner because we, we've created the state machine on the, the player camera. And if we left this game object as owner, we would get our own position, which can be useful. There, there's a, a lot of value in that um, as we, you know, if we were to make some more complex mechanics and want to kind of figure out where we were in space and how far, you know, how much distance we traveled or some other things, uh, we potentially could do that with getting uh, the, the camera or the player position. But what I want to do is I want to specify a game object, and the game object that I want to target here uh, in this case is the balloon object. Now I have a couple of different options for getting uh, the balloon in here. I can just click and drag all one motion and drop that into the target field or I can click on this little bullet here and that will bring up um, a couple of different options. We can we can link to things that are inside our assets or our project folder um, or we can go to the scene tab and this shows us everything that's inside of our scene. So if we, if we look over here um, all this stuff is currently in our scene. There's some extra stuff here, that's because it's the children of some of these objects. So um, I can just double click on the balloon uh, and now it's loaded. If I wanted to unload that, I could click on the little bullet here and just click none or double click none and now I have no object loaded. So just a couple different methods. Look to the scene, there's the balloon. 
Um, and so I'm getting the position of the balloon. I'm interested in just really only the X position. So I'll click this little drop down menu, which allows me to create a new variable. And this variable um, behind the scenes, it's creating a float variable for us. And I'm gonna call this player X, um, or I could call it player X POS for position or, or whatever makes sense. But this isn't gonna be a real complicated uh, game. So I'm not gonna have too many variables. Um, so I'll just call that player X knowing that it's the position and we'll get the player's X position every frame. Um, and so we can, we can test that. Uh, so when we hit the play button, we can see that we're currently getting uh, the player, which um, if I were to select the player, I'm assuming it's at 2.18 on the X. And we can confirm that by selecting the balloon. And uh, yep, it's X position is 2.18. Okay, so if I go back to the camera, um, and as I push that balloon over, you can see that, that value updating. Now, as we go up, uh, it doesn't care about the Y because we're not storing the Y in a variable. We're just we're just capturing the X. And so now what we can do is we're getting the position of player X. And so in this transform action set, we'll also do a set position. So first we get the position of the balloon object in this case for the player object. I'm going to collapse that action because it's doing exactly what we want. We've debugged it. We know it's working. Now I'm going to set the position, and this time the game object, I want to set the owner, because remember, it's the camera that, that we've created this little uh, state machine on. And I'm going to use the player's X position uh, for the camera, and I'll do this every frame. Hit the play button, and so now the result should be uh, that we get the camera to track and adopt the X position of the player. Okay, so we can get it to track. Um, because we're ignoring Y, we're not setting Y, we don't care what Y is, um, y is just whatever the default value of the camera is. So um, same thing with Z. So if we decided that we wanted to recompose this camera and kind of move it in a little bit and kind of zoom in, I'm looking at the preview down here to compose this. Now when I hit the play button, uh, that, that's composed, um, but it still tracks the Y position of the player. Okay, so um, if we wanted to, we could do the same thing with, with Y, um, and then we can build in some... Uh, variables and some clamps to restrict its its position. Um, so if we wanted to only move within a certain range, we could do that um, as well. But this is just a, a simple setup um, to get our camera to track left and right. Okay, so in the next presentation, I'll continue to push forward the uh, rocket and the balloon mechanics. Um, we'll adopt a sort of a, a fuel or an energy um, mechanism where, uh, you know, we have a finite amount of fuel or energy and uh, we consume that as we move our game objects. Um, and I'll demo that with uh, both the rocket and the balloon uh, because they both present slightly different problems. We'll do that in the next presentation.